And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time Milk Slap, a forensics challenge which has just a URL, which we will hit, and a hint. Look at the problem category. Not very helpful. And it's taken a little bit to load, but it seems to be a guy. And as we slide across, we move this GIF or whatever through its progression, kind of like a flip book or something. So I'm going to open DevTools, I'm going to inspect, and we're going to take a look at what we have going on. I'm going to expand everything on the page, and I'm going to take a look at the HTML that's coming across. We have a style sheet. The name of the page is Milk Slap. It says it's inspired by Eel Slap. Let's take a look at what that is. Seems to just be kind of the same thing where we can control this guy getting slapped. That's kind of fun. All right. Credit to, and then we've got a GitHub. Let's take a look at this guy, see who he is, see if that gives us anything. Give that a second to load. The inspiration, and then we have a script that's also loaded. Well, let's take a look at the script and what we can see. Good enough animate function, touch animate function, they're both being assigned to the image. And I, I can't tell you exactly what this does, but it seems to flip through frames, looks reasonable. I don't see anything interesting here. Looking at the style CSS, seeing if we have anything it reveals something, any telling names, not really. And then finally, we have an image, concat underscore v. And it looks like a series of frames. We'll save this and we'll take a look at it. Drop it on the desktop. Try that again. Boy, that really does not want to open. I'm not sure why. Maybe I didn't give it enough time to save before I pulled it away. So let's let's be more patient this time. Well, that that sucks. Why doesn't that open? All right, well, I guess it's just something to do with whatever image browser is in Cali. All right, so we have a bunch of frames here. Let's zoom out. And I'm thinking maybe at the beginning or the end, there might be some hidden frame that's there that we can't get to, but it doesn't look like it I'm at the very bottom here. I don't see anything special. Go to the top, don't see anything special. I will open up a terminal. Actually, first I want to go back to desktop. I don't really want to work in my messy downloads directory. And I, I think this is good. I think it just doesn't open with that other image viewer. So let's be sure it is. All right, so we can run the EXIF tool on this. See what kind of metadata there is. Well, it's a big PNG. Nothing really there. We can run strings on it. See if there's anything like uh, Pico in it. Minus, so we're doing a grep. We don't care what case it is for Pico. We don't get anything. Let's take a look, see if maybe we're missing something by just running through this manually quickly. And it pretty much looks like gibberish. I don't see anything resembling a hidden message or anything like that. There's probably going to be a ton of this too, since it's a 17 megabyte file. God, I wonder how much there is. Uh, 
I should have done. Here's here's the smart way to do this. We'll do a word count for each line. Oh my God, 200,000 plus. Okay, yeah, we can't do that. So we'll do a man on strings to see the manual. And we see that minus N is the minimum length, I think. So we can get rid of a lot of these smaller ones. We'll make it a minimum of like nine. Take a look at how many words there are, 2,000. That's still more than I want to go through. 33. All right. That seems fair. Let's see what we have. And it's all garbage. So our next steps, it could be steganography. There could be hidden data inside the image. Let's start with steghide. And we will try to do an extract. And we'll provide this file. I don't know the passphrase, but it doesn't matter. Stegai doesn't support the PNG format. Let's try ZSteg, just another steganography program. Pass it the file. And we see the flag. So this is one of those CTFs that's a little bit frustrating in that there, you're always going to have images anytime you deal with a website and you're not going to know necessarily if something's hidden if you're not given a clue. So I think this would have been better done if there was some kind of clue in here, like maybe the image was uh, an ID of image and it also had a class of something like ZSteg or just anything to give you a hint because you, you're very rarely going to have just a single image in anything you're looking at. So do you run everything through every steganography uh, program that you know? I, I don't think so. It's not very satisfying. It's not a fun solution. But regardless, we got the solution and it was accepted. So hopefully that was helpful for you. If it was, please like, subscribe, comment, etc. Thanks a lot. Bye.